definitions of heaven and hell. This is going to be probably disagreeable to some, but whatever. This is just, let me just tell you how it, how it came to me. Anyway, the ideas of heaven and hell are similar to what people think, but it's not fire and brimstone. It's not, you know, floating in the clouds and whatever. If that's what you want them to be, or if you think them to be, it's not really want. It's more of a set into your mind through belief. Like, I know the word believe is overused, so I'm trying not to use that. Belief is basically the same thing. But um, when you sin, you know, we call sin, you know, when you don't live to your full potential, you do something wrong, you, uh, you know, from everything from murdering to recklessly overeating and not taking care of your body. Like, those things are not living to your full potential or causing you to not be able to live to your full potential. And when your soul returns to soul level, it doesn't grow much, okay? That's, a lot of people have grown a lot, but as as the future moves on, we're adding more things that are getting to be more confusing. Like, there are more children being born with special gifts right off the bat because their souls have been they, they learn through the collective consciousness and they're born already advanced but then we right with our added technology of you know you know technology with our added technology basically we have added that and become lazy on our human effort and turned it to a machine relied, you know, you know, comply with the machines and, or, you know, we, we use the machines to keep things occupied or make things simpler and we've removed task oriented physical things. And that's not exactly what we should have done. We can easily go back to at least being more active with what we do. But as we've gotten through past history, our souls have learned and now we became smarter and we started inventing all these new things to make things easier, but instead of making them easier and using them for those purposes, we gave them to everybody because people were money hungry and wanted to make money off the ideas, and now everybody can have access to everything, which makes it very difficult to get things back in order. I'm getting off the main topic of heaven and hell, but it's important that I point out that because the children are born these days like so super smart or already soul smart not like what we call smart mathematics and reading and shit we're talking soul smart very creative very at one with what it means but we right from the get go we distract them with stuff and we and what's on those devices that they see and the radio that they hear the shit that's perverted the shit that's violent the stuff that's not recommended you say and guess what we know that but we do it anyway we're like, oh, it's okay, I'm a good person, I grew up with that stuff in my face. Because you have those fears and those things in, instilled in the back of your subconscious mind, you don't even know it. But, but at the same time, you know it when somebody points it out, you just don't want to admit it. And I'm not trying to say I'm right, because everybody knows this. It's like, not something that's uncommon. I mean, maybe they don't know about the children, but think about it. You know, they, our souls do grow and learn and, and keep evolving. But if we keep distracting them with the stuff around us, that's why I try to not watch TV because it's just distracting my brain with new thoughts and, you know, catchy songs that get in your head or things that were interesting and entertaining but not exactly the things you should be picturing and thinking will cause you to have a different version of your afterlife. What you feed your mind and body in, in the physical life adds to what your soul has already known so until you tap like you know go within and understand who you are internally your individual soul because you have both you you are you are all but you are an individual representation of that that's why you have an astral body and, and that's why the astral body used this vehicle you're you're a vehicle inside of a vehicle and there's a platform where it all starts and there's a thing where it all came from and, and and I think that I'm one of the few that's actually experienced that, and I don't know how to put it out there the right way because I'm trying to 
you know, take all these things that we've made sound so miraculous and so fairy tale like heaven and hell, and make them into what, what actually is meant by those things. Like, hell it can be horrible and whatever if you live a life where you tort, like you hurt people and whatever, and then your spirit realizes what you did to yourself in a way, you know what I mean? Like, because those people will, will die and those bodies will be gone, they'll be expendable. And though, though they're not, you know, super important, but at the same time, it's your soul's lesson that you're learning through these vehicles, through the astral and the physical vehicles. So, I don't know, man, it's it's very deep, and, and heaven and hell are there. He like, if you totally become understanding of what things are, and you, you know that those bad things are out there, but you just don't feed your mind with them, so they're not constantly right there on the forefront of your brain, thinking about, like, blood and violence and perversion, you know? If they're not right there, and your your heaven will easily be a place where you see happiness and joy. And happiness and joy is not as gay as, like, strumming a harp and walking around in prayer position all day. It's, it's whatever you want it to be. If you want to have sex or float through the clouds or deep sea dive underwater and see what's in the center of the earth, go to other galaxies, you can do all that stuff. That's what heaven is. Hell is just the same kind of potential, but with horrible... The, like a horrible effect to it like not just that word I mean I don't know how to put it in uh, big enough words it can be terrifyingly just catastrophic to a soul on a soul level and I mean I've experienced that too and I don't know how to you know I hear the tone of my voice I may have some some like I don't know if it's deep or high it's sort of in between you know I have my imperfections in, in my human sense but so what I love it I love me but then I hear myself judging myself as Dan, and that's when I start getting nervous about putting it out and all that stuff, and what if people will judge me, and, like, deep down, I'm, I know who I am, but then I fight it off to be dad, Dan, son, worker, business owner, you know, play my roles. In order to do those things, I have to come back to playing this game, so I don't know, that's my biggest problem. So when I do that, I lose my whole, uh, super motivation, confidence, knowing that I'm worthy of everything, because I come back to playing by the rules, you know, and that's, that's a big, hard thing that everyone's doing, in order to break out of the rules, we have to get rid of the rules, and it, we have to turn, in basically, the world into a majority rules kind of system, and the people that don't win, don't necessarily just have to go along with it, like, when it comes to major things, I don't think anyone has to really agree on, no, I mean, I'm not really agree, but have to think too hard about, you know, no murdering and no raping or no sex against will or no anything like that. But aside from those common, knowable, simple things, like, basically it'll be, you know, majority rules on the whole, and then we'll have uh, other places where they can, people who want to practice their own ways of doing their own methods, they're allowed to, just they make sure that they don't harm other people, and if it's something that's harmful, they do it in a more, you know, concealed, more safe environment. You know, we, we work things out. We talk it out with each other. We're not secretive. We keep our our things open instead of trying to feel sneaky. We get rid of those things that we even have to feel sneaky about or embarrassed about. We become open and honest. Heaven and hell are caused by the things we keep in and hide or the things that we do in anger. It's, it's simple as that. The afterlife is the the reflection of this life, and in, in what effect you you take, and how much you love and care about the things that you you are or the you're involved in. You know. Anyway, I think that got at least the gist of heaven and hell, and a lot more than that. So I love you. Peace.